Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's time to go back out to the ballpark where we have some peanuts and cracker jacks, but today we're not playing a card game, we're playing a dice game. We're going to be looking at Baseball Highlights The Dice Game. Uh, this is from Eagle Griffin Games, designed by Mike Fitzgerald. It is sort of a rolling right version or spiritual successor to Baseball Highlights 2045, the card game. So let me show you a very quick overview of how this works, and I'll see you on the other side for my review. Baseball Highlights the Dice Game is a standalone roll and write game based off the hugely popular Baseball Highlights 2045, where one to four players are going to be playing simultaneously on their own park. Players will be hitting singles, doubles, triples, home runs, and having walks and stolen bases. Over multiple rounds, each player is going to have their own park, and they're going to be using those aspects to work down specific tracks in hopes to score the most runs in the end. Each round, each player gets a chance to be the active player, and you can take all of the dice of one type and activate it that many times. So, three triples, for example. So as we mark off these three triples, once we get to this one, this is a chained action, which now allows us to cross off one in the doubles action spot, which here actually gives us a double, which puts a runner right on second base. And if we use our last die for this turn and you see a star and you mark this off, you get to use this twice, double it. But if you don't end your dice on here, well, you don't get to use it at all. A little bit of pressure luck and setting yourself up for strategies for future rounds. Now that triple will score this runner, and the second triple will score this runner. And we now have two runs. And as the active player is doing that, all other players are simultaneously taking any two actions that have at least a die on it, but they don't take the dice off the board. And then we look at the pitcher die to see what happens to our runners. In this case, nothing, it was a good inning. But it might be bad like a triple play, removing up to three base runners on your bases. Or maybe a double play removing two runners, removing your furthest base runner. But it's not always bad, you might actually get a stolen base once in a while. And then the dice used by the active players rolled back onto the board, along with the pitcher die for the next active player. As you move down these tracks, you might activate a clutch hit, which moves you down this track and can activate other things like singles, doubles, triples, and a lot of home runs if you go far enough. Or you might activate a power dice, and for each one of those you've unlocked, you get to roll one of the power dice while you're the active player to give yourself more options. But don't worry, none of the other players get to use it. And you'll play a certain amount of rounds depending on the amount of players and the most runs wins. And there's also a solo variant where you can play against Hits Fits. Baseball Highlights the Dice Game is for ages 8 and up, and it takes only 20 minutes to play. All right, now before I get started on this review, I want to disclaim a few things. Number one, uh, recently Eagle Griffin Games has contracted me to help them create content for their YouTube channel, uh, mostly of vlogs, and I have covered this game on those vlogs, helping them create uh, content of their own. Um, and I also want to say that this game is on Kickstarter right now, and I don't, I don't think I've ever, I don't typically review games on Kickstarter because typically I will do a preview video and we'll be compensated for that. And because of that, we don't offer opinions because I never offer an opinion on any video where I'm compensated in any way. And so, but with this, this review is my idea and they didn't know I was going to do this. And I wanted to do a review because I'm a huge fan of Mike Fitzgerald. I love Baseball Highlights 2045 and my fan base, I think a lot of them like it too. And I wanted to be able to share this with you, even though this is on Kickstarter. So I want to say I do have ties to Eagle Griffin Games in certain aspects, but not for this review. And I've not been compensated in any way, shape or form for this review. Uh, now with that being said, um, you might know from watching my channel that I absolutely adore Baseball Highlights 2045. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It's just brilliant. Love it. And Mike Fitzgerald's one of my favorite designers. This essentially is a roll and write version of that. Quick, 20 minutes. Uh, so let's dive into what I liked about it. The baseball theme itself, I happen to love. You may or may not. Uh, if you're watching this video, my guess is you probably either like it or it doesn't turn you off. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have clicked on the video. And the baseball theme, it actually does help to teach the game with the runners running around the base. But much like Baseball Highlights 2045, you don't need to know baseball to play the game. Now, probably even less so because there's no specific runners and how they come home and things like that. It's just, 
it's very simple to, to teach, even if you haven't had any experience with baseball. Uh, it's sure it would help if you had it, but it's definitely not like a prerequisite. You can come up to speed very quick here. I love that you have now up to four players that you're playing simultaneously. You know, baseball highlights. If there's four players, you have a tournament, right? Because you're really only playing two players at a time, where this is like four players are playing at the same time and you're playing all the same game at the same time. And I like that. That's sort of a difference and that's a twist to this. Uh, the active player and the inactive player, they're taking actions and they're taking different actions. And this, I've, you've seen this in other roll and rights and it works very well because A, you have a different type of a turn with the active player, but you basically take a turn on everyone's turn reducing downtime. It's just a great mechanism that you find in tons of roll and rights and it works really well here. And I always like when they do this. Uh, when roll and rights don't have this type of thing, it kind of irks me. So I'm glad that this is here. I love when you're moving up those tracks, you're deciding which ones to, to go up and which ones to, how far to go down, how many dice to take for which things, and you're trying to chain together certain things, like go ahead and go here, which will give me this, which will give me a double over here, uh, and, and you're trying to figure that out. You're also trying to figure out when to land exactly on those little starred ones that will get you double if you, if you, if you land on them with your last die of that type, or nothing. That little press your luck aspect's really fun. Uh, the pitcher die. This is huge because all, I mean, if you think about it, it's like, it's blank, it might help you, but most of the time it's going to hurt you. And your strategy of what you're going to take that round, you might just think, oh, well, it's simple. If there's three or four dice of this one thing and there's like two or less of everything else, when you're the active player, of course you're going to take that. Maybe not, because depending on where you are, where your runners are, it might not be as beneficial to take those three because you're going to leave a, the bases loaded and they're going to have a triple play, right? Or you might leave the bases loaded and even they're going to take a double play. And you're like, I don't want to do that. I want to try to set myself up for other rounds where I can actually get these runners home. So it's like, it really makes the decision tree very interesting, that pitcher die, because it makes it so that every round you're probably gonna do something different than maybe you think, and decisions aren't as obvious, and I like that aspect of it. The power dice is cool. Working down those different tracks gets you more options, but only for you. Really cool cool idea there. The clutch track is fun. One more little track to work down and try to time at the right time to, to really hit when you really need it. Um, and now, I don't know this for sure, but I mean, it feels like this game was heavily inspired by Ganshan Clever, uh, also known as that, That's Clever, or That's Pretty Clever. Um, that was a very popular roll and write by, I believe, Wolfgang Warsh, maybe. Um, and I, th I think I remember Mike saying he really liked that game. Um, and I don't know if directly he was inspired by that, but it feels like it because you're taking a certain amount of dice, everyone else is left with other things, you're going down tracks, and this chains to this, which then chains to that, which then chains to that, and you can have these really big turns. If you like Ganshan Clever, regardless of if you like baseball or not, I think you're going to like this a lot. Um, now, I didn't show the overview of the expansion. So there's a little expansion called Football High Dice, a dice game. And it's very similar to its core, but it does add some different things. It adds um, breakaways for runs and yards after catches for passes. Two other tracks you can work down. It has a kicker track you can work down. Where over the course of the game, you can kick field goals from further out and score from further out. It, it has sort of the, 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 the end zone where you, you might throw a pass past the end zone and be incomplete adds another layer of strategy there. Uh, it has defensive die, which sometimes will affect the run plays, sometimes the pass plays, and that will change, much like the pitcher die does. But anyway, the expansion's great too. It's similar, very similar, that teaching the expansion is very easy with those, I've just told you the differences. But those differences are subtle enough that it still does feel different. Uh, different enough that it's like, yes, these are two separate games that share the same core concept, and they're both awesome, but they're both different, and they both are good in different ways. Also, the game Solo. I've played both games Solo twice, and <laughs> all four times, I won on the last turn on the last roll by one. And it's just like, and that's on the normal difficulty, and there's ways to ratchet up the difficulty, which I would do, but I bet you if I played those four games another time, another four times, uh, that would that probably wouldn't happen, you know, because there is some luck of the dice and things like that. But how tightly this is managed and designed, I mean, I text Mike Fitzgerald after I did that. I said, you are just, how do you do this? Like, how do you do this? And he's like, well, I just, I tweak after every play, you know? And so the solo game works well. I also must say at the end here for, on the positive side of things is that like, much like many people these days, I was huge into rolling rights when they first came out. I was trying every single last one of them. And then 
the market flooded with them. And quite honestly, I'm very burnt out on Roland Wright. To the point now where like, I don't get excited for them. In fact, if someone says they do want to play a new Roland Wright, most of the times I'm like, eh, I'm good, I'll just play the ones I know I like. Like there's just too many of them out there. Uh, and I'm glad to know that this one really feels different to me and it really is one that stood out for me. At the end uh, of the year, uh, you know, this is gonna be one of those ones on the, small, the short list that I'll be looking through and being like, okay, dice game of the year, let's look at some of these. And this is definitely gonna be in the conversation for that for sure. Uh, on the negative side of things, the theme might turn people off. Um, not everyone is going to like sports themes. In fact, some people, it will be a detriment and they won't want to play it. I understand that for sure. They're probably not ones watching this video, but if you are, uh, again, as I said before, you don't really need to know baseball to enjoy this game. But that could definitely be a negative for you. Uh, the other one is not necessarily anything with the game, but things I would like to see with the game is I would love to see, and I have a feeling maybe they'll do this if the game succeeds really well, is I want to see more parks, which essentially are different sheets with different layouts and a different pitcher die for each park. Some parks like, you know, you have San Francisco, which is going to be a pitcher's park. It's really windy. It's the, the ball, the ball doesn't travel far. And then you're going to have one like Coors Field where like lots of offense, right? And so having different dice and having different things to add to, to sort of mesh together. Now I've played this handfuls of times and I'm not sick, even close to being, you know, done with this game. So the game has a lot of longevity because of the, the, the dice is always going to change how things work, but it's going to be fun. I think if they're able to create more, um, you know, more parks and more dice and things like that to, to go along with it. And hopefully if there's enough success, they'll do something like that. Who knows? Uh, but that's the other little thing there, but overall I really loved it. And even if you're sick of rolling rights, you gotta check this one out. So even though this is a game that's not really out yet, it's just on Kickstarter, um, I'm still, because of how much I love this game, I know when it comes out, uh, it's definitely staying in the collection. So it is getting a saxophone serenade. And so this has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, by helping you find the next one you'll love. My friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. It's time to take me out to the ball game again. Cracker Jacks and, uh, hmm, I can't even think of that song. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I can't believe it. So even though this is a...